Hey everybody, welcome to our third week of these Lent videos. And our theme today is on hope and releasing hopelessness to receive hope from Jesus. And I just think though we picked this topic many months ago, the timing of this is really relevant for us in the situation that we're in across the globe and in our own communities. We need to remember that Jesus is the source of our hope right now. And we are in the season when things are just changing daily for us. And we need to let go of a lot of routines that we're used to and a lot of events or situations that we were excited and looking forward to. And to acknowledge the fact that there's loss in that, I think is a good thing for us. Um, to acknowledge this change in this loss and not cover it up is good for us. But then also to talk about how do we live in hope in this season of loss and change. And so even before this week, many of us were dealing with situations that may have felt hopeless, situations that are just really hard to navigate in life, circumstances that are out of our control. And so we also want to talk about hope in those circumstances and how we find that in Jesus as well. Our verse today is Romans 12, 12. We're still in this um, passage in Romans, and it is be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And so we, we find that our knowing our hope is from God is the starting point. And we get to have that hope because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we know that God is with us in all of this. And that's a promise that I want to hold on to. It's not saying we're joyful because of the circumstances we're in or the pain we're experiencing. We are joyful in the hope that God is with us. And when I feel alone, fear and doubt and hopelessness tends to increase in my life. And so I just want to share, like a few years ago, I just went through this really, really hard season for myself. And I was sharing it with a friend of mine, and she asked me the question, where do you see God in this with you? And as I sat there for a few minutes, I had this picture in my head of me sitting on an island and God was out there in the water in a boat. And he, it wasn't like he abandoned me because I could still see him, but to me it felt like he was far away. And she said to me, what would it look like to invite God on your island? And I didn't like that question because I didn't want to like have to invite God on my island. I just wanted him to be there with me. And so I did nothing about it. In fact, I didn't even think about it for a couple years. I just let it, I just let it go. So I thought, but then my heart just really came to a place of being broken. And I asked God to heal me and to give me hope and to come alongside me in this situation. And he did, and he is, he continues to do that in my life. And when I was updating my friend, she said, you finally invited God on your island. And that was just such a great picture for me that yes, I did invite him in and he came. And so I'm just to ask you that question. Is there an area in your life where you feel like you're on an island and you need to invite God in? Um, here's one thing I know. I felt alone, but I knew God was still with me. Even though my feelings were that, I knew he was with me and even in that picture I could see God when I was sitting there on that island he did not leave me and it was really my stubbornness that kept the distance from me and God in that situation and so he was still there but he was waiting for me and I love this verse in Zephaniah three seventeen. it said the Lord your God is in your midst a mighty one who will save he will rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. So we just need to claim the fact and know the fact that God is with us. And then I think hope comes in taking things day by day. The verse says, be patient in affliction. And another translation said, be steadfast. And the Bible tells us that God will give us what we need each day. We know from Matthew 6, it says, don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. 
So let's remind ourselves to seek God first because he'll provide for us daily, including hope. He will provide hope for us daily. And then the third thing is really um, hope comes in staying in communication with God. The verse says, be devoted in prayer. And in that we can seek him for wisdom, for guidance, for strength. So I just want to encourage us to be people that pray honestly and pray frequently. So if you're in a place where you maybe feel hopeless, let's tell God that. Let's give him that honest, this is where I am. This is what I'm feeling. I mean, if you look at the Psalms, there's many verses where people are crying out, God, where are you in this? I feel alone. Come rescue me. And so let's just be honest in our prayers. I love this verse in Isaiah 41. It is filled with hope. It's verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then we talked about, or I mentioned maybe being people who pray frequently. And there's a practice of prayer that I really has become meaningful for me in my life, and it's called breath prayer. And it's something that we can do throughout the day. And really, it's a just taking a moment to pause and breathe deeply in and breathe deeply out. And as we do that rhythm, to, I like to breathe in a name for God and breathe out a prayer or a plea or a promise that I want to claim from God. So there's some, I have some examples for us. So maybe our breath prayers are focused around a promise. So it could be, Abba, I belong to you. Or Father, you are with me. Or Yahweh, which is the Hebrew name for God, you are my hope. And just pausing and saying that when your mind goes and strays in other directions or your feelings take you in another way, it brings us back to God and the hope we have in him. But maybe your breath prayer wants to help you navigate your circumstances. So that could be something like just simply, God, help me. Shepherd, guide me. Father, calm me. Yahweh, uphold me. What I like about this practice is that it's just a really simple prayer that comes from my heart. I can say it over and over throughout the day, no matter what chaos is going around me. And it calms me and helps me pause for a moment. And it just brings me back to God. So I'm going to invite us to have this as our Lent practice this week. And for each of us to think about what our breath prayer is and include that in the rhythm of our days. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> All right, I have one more thing for us. I want to close with this idea of how we nurture hope in one another. I, I, we know that God's our source of hope, but I think we can help nurture that in one another. And there's all these verses that talk about one another's. And I'm just going to read a few of them. So love one another, care for one another, serve one another, bear one another's burdens, be kind and compassionate to one another comfort one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, and there's so many more. We're asked to be one another people. We say around here, be there you are people. It's, it's similar. And how we do that might look differently right now, but let's think about how to be one another people. It might be FaceTiming with someone who's home by themselves and can't get out. It could be buying groceries for someone or I've heard of someone creating a neighborhood text chain to check in on each other. It might be praying for someone that you know needs hope and just asking God to fill them with hope. And I keep saying this in different settings, but when we don't know what to do, let's just ask God, what do you want me to do right now? And he'll let us know. So I want to close with going back to this Isaiah verse because it is filled with hope. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
So let's open our arms wide and receive the hope that God has for us this week.